What is going on, guys? Your boy Guns here with Saint and Gray. And uh, today is a very... Uh, how do we say this? How do we say this? Definitely puts Mage Gang on edge. The Mage Gang is definitely on edge, biting our nails. Uh, as you guys know, we got Zeta and Magret coming over, a.k.a. Craig's mom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know why, but it's so funny. Anyways, so one of the things that we were discussing earlier, we were actually talking about this prior to us recording this, but I'm like, you know what? That's a pretty good conversation to potentially record and kind of put the information out there so you guys kind of see what we're thinking. So originally, all three of us, we chose the mages because, you know, they just controlled the field, right? And are anyone that was like, mid to low spin and was an archer would just get absolutely obliterated right you had to be at least t5 have crazy counter attack good artifacts or you're just a kraken trying to deal the most damage but with these new archers coming like if, when you guys notice right most of the top krakens are running like triple archer marches i mean even saint was telling me about you know i mean Gray also and myself, we saw what, Ali, what what Alibaba was running. He was running three archer marches, I think, and two mages. What archer marches was he running? Do you guys remember? Uh, I, re I definitely I was... remember the Sindri on Fragar. That, that Sindri on Fragar. I think he was using um, was it was it uh, Kanara Hosk, and then did he go um, Nico Guan? I think it was like Guan or some shit like that. Yeah, one of those. I two. think so. Was Potato? Mm -hmm. I think Potato was as well. Yeah. So, and. Also, uh, you know, shout out to Mordana. Um, I talked to her and I'm like, damn, like what, like what, what marches are you running? You know, and she sent me a screenshot and it was, and it was those marches. It was, uh, you know, Lilia Valen. Um, and I think she had, I don't, I don't think she had Bird to Heart, but for sure her archer marches were Sindri on Fragar, Nico Guan. And then um, almost said Zeta and Magret. Damn, that's how much I'm thinking about that pair, dude. <laughs> that's how much the <laughs> archers are living in my mind rent-free right now, dude. <laughs> they live in the mind of all age gang. Dude, it's really, dude, it's really changing the freaking meta, though, bro. Like, you know, it used to be, oh, you know, hybrid use your mages. Yeah, guys, we're going to have to go to hybrid gang. And I think... <laughs> hybrid gang. Right? <laughs> and, and I know some of you guys right now are probably like, damn, dude, no way, you know, we're going to end up going to Arches. I do feel like there's stages to the game, right? So the beginning stages, I feel like, you know, uh, mages are still, like, the most dominant in the field for majority of the players, right? Like I said, unless you're a Kraken and you're going in there with multiple Archer Marches just dishing out counterattack damage, you know, you know, for most people, it's going to be the mages. And then, 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 uh, the season talents get, uh, introduced. When do season talents get introduced? Is it season two? Um, or the, or the, or the, or the two talent? plus. Oh. Two yeah. plus the the T one or T O S one, mm. yeah. Okay, yeah. Wait, so what season talent? Like the long range war. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Wasn't that two this plus. season? Yeah, yeah. That was this season. Oh, so two plus plus then. Sorry, two plus plus. Guys. They need to sort the names out. But yeah, the T one season basically. But this is this is season S T one. Yeah, not that, two that plus. Yeah. This is T one. This, this is why it's like two. When... Yeah. So most people long would get here. Uh, three. Definitely changed. Long range warfare definitely changed the meta. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's like now we're so it's like, but now we're in a situation, guys, where players about you know, uh, for I would say like around starting around like Saints, uh, power year was seventy million now. <clears throat> yeah, seventy mil. Seventy mil, and I'm ninety two mil. Like so. Starting from around 70 mil, when you're starting to introduce, like, your new set of archers, right? You start getting put in a situation where you're like, damn, like, I'm mage gang for sure. But there's not four mage marches right now that are just absolutely cracked out of their mind, right? So it puts you, it puts you in a situation where now you're going up against people that have um, good archer marches and mage marches. So it does make you think, right? As far as, like, if you're the main mage route and you do spend a little bit of money, it's like, you know, how do you how do you invest into these archers, you know? And 
you guys have obviously heard me say like the Kanara Hosk is a good one. Now I know a few of you guys in the comments have been saying, "Hey, like you know, you you're not talking about Nico." The reason why I'm not talking about Nico is because like that's a huge investment, dude. You know what I mean, Hosk? I I get him immediately. Yeah, Nico needs to be extra. He needs to be usable. I mean, six hundred nine, you're going to get any tokens for a gold key commander. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's a it's a pretty big investment. Like, if you're Archer main, yeah, sure. You know that that's going to be a pretty easy one. But now, one of the one of the main things that we wanted to talk about um, is we're getting to a point now in the game where marches are going to start getting subbed subbed out right so now granted a lot of you guys um depending on your spend levels it, it that will determine when that time comes for you but for most people um in the season that we're in now um we're gonna start getting into a situation where marches are gonna start getting subbed out for example we're getting zeta coming in right right so we all know the um the meta is going to be Lilia, Valen, or or Thea, if you have Celestials, right? You know, debate with me in the comments, please. I love debating on that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Bert Tohar, Sindri on Fragar, uh, Kanara, Nico, or Kanara Haas, and then Zeta and Magret. Now, when the new Mages comes, who is that going to replace? Is it going to replace the Mage Marches? Is it going to replace one of the Archer Marches? I don't know. What do you guys think? Saying, okay. <clears throat> I think it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's it's kind of gonna sort of um, you know hinge on two things. It's gonna be the seasonal talent, and it's going to be what skill set the uh, you know the mage heroes bring, right? Because if it's not, if it's an AOE, <clears throat> you know a true AOE, um, then you're probably looking at the mages, right? You know the mage gonna drop one of the you know what you would determine to be your weakest archer march because. You know, AOE just gets effectively starting to get free value, aren't you? You know, if you start getting those uh, Lilia fireballs in, anyone else you tag is free. You know, this uh, um, free value. So I think it's just going to come down to what the skill set is and what the seasonal talents are. So I think when we spoke <clears> about <throat> about subbing and benching, I think it's going to be one of those where you still want to be able to you know hybrid invest in multiple marches, and then you're just going to swap in and out which one sort of fit each season's meta. But for me personally, it just really depends what these next mages are, like Gen Three mages, and they're just AOE marches. They're you know obviously gonna put Lilia Valen on the on the hold because you know if they're just better than them. Then you know they'll be better. But one could say, oh, the AOE value that you get is way better than the single target damage from Bert Tohar. So I would want to sub them out and slap two AOE marches and then the three Archer march setup. But you could be, you could say, well, with the five archer, with the five man setup with three archers, two mages, as <clears throat> as like a T4 player hitting a T5 archer with Lilia Valen, you just get smoked on counterattack. It's actually not even fair. But I've noticed like Bert Tohar gets like two to one trades against T5 Sindri on Fragar. So I'm only a little T4. Well, I can't hit a. Uh, Sindri on Fragor with my Lilia Valen because they just die on counterattack. So mm. they're just tanky AoE marches that have like mad de defense, but you know, not too crazy attack where the, most of the value comes from AoE. If they can just survive the counterattack from, from archers, then you know, they're replacing my Lilia Valen on site. I just take way too many sevs hitting a Sindri on Fragor with Lilia Valen. But it but... just depends what shows up. Yeah, that's definitely true. And you you think it's because of uh do you think it's because of Tohar's like reduced counterattack damage taken? Well as long as yeah. you don't get hit, the twenty five percent defense that <clears throat> Bert try and give you, plus the additional like what was it, thirty five percent defense from Tohar, it's like fifty five percent defense. And then you do so much damage to these archers with the mage that you're you're still you're taking negative trades on the normal like turns where you're not raging. But when the rage skills start popping off, you just do more damage than what they're hitting you for. Granted, if you start getting hit, then it's wraps. But, like, you shouldn't be getting hit by a T5 archer if you're T4 mage. You should just run away. Yeah, and then, you know, one of the things we also discussed, guys, is, like, 
it, it, it really changed everything. So I went from, like, in the beginning of the game, I had this, like, idea that I was going to have five fly, flying mage marches just flying over a hill, whatever, whatever, right? That's still kind of my sight that I have. But now, with the archers being such a massive influence, more than they already were, right? At first, like I said, and I'll say it again, because I know some people are probably like, nah, what, what do you mean, archer? Like, you know, mages, whatever, whatever, right? Because obviously we have our diehard archer guys, but before it was mainly like mid to high and krakens that would could use the archers you know but now it's everyone can be a good archer player bro from the beginning like imagine if they had long range warfare in the beginning and people are running freaking uh kanara nico bro <laughs> it's not nico dude, kanara imagine season that one, season one dude that would change everything i think i mean granted Lilia Valent, or Lilia is just like a no-brainer, right? She's relatively easy to awaken compared to the other players if you break down the cost of awakening a hero when you're actually spending a little bit of money or whatever. But it's like, what worries me, and guys, and kind of where my head is at, is like, is it possible that eventually it's going to be a five archer march set up over the five mage? Or will there be some kind of combination based off what kind of buffs and debuffs that they bring into the field, how, how Saint said? Mm, I, it could definitely go into a stage where it is an archer like meta. But I don't think mages are doing like 100% bench. You're definitely always going to want a mage out there just because of the AoE factor. And then, like, the anti-archer, like, if you have Burt Tohar, those things just melt through a, a Sindri on Freigar, like, even if you're getting targeted. If you're, like, on the same level, like a T5 mage versus, like, a T5 archer. Yeah, I mean, I personally have melted a lot of archer mains, and I save my artifacts specifically for the strong players of, of the archers, right? To try to, you know, take away from their... From their from their punch on the field especially like you save a nice little max inferno max orb or even a decent level max orb max inferno yeah you're gonna yellow bar to red bar and archer march almost instantly mm -hmm. now that's where that's where the archers kind of fall off because they don't have that range for um for you know to for their artifacts to hit which you know kind of leads me on to my next thing of like the season talents like i do plan guys like right as of right now this is my plan going into the new season with long range warfare right using my archer marches as best as i can right with um i'll go into that right now but using my archer marches as best i can as soon as it's coming down to the needy greedy fights where you're only able to heal like a march or two before you send them back out then I'll switch back to Arcane Torrent because then I'm going to be rocking my, you know, my Lily of Alien, Lily of Thea, and Bert Tohar, right? Because that's where I have the most punch for my account, and then I'll get my 10% hero skill damage back. You know, that's kind of what I'm what I'm thinking right now. Yeah, that 10% that skill damage is kind of crazy. It is ridiculous, bro. Yeah, Thank definitely, de definitely going to be, I think, meta. Uh, you know, meta orientated, you know, shifting based on what the devs sort of do, landscape, what skills, you know, skills artifacts. Because as you say, you know, you look at what Bert, for example, Bert Toha, how easily, you know, you keep that march as well because of how well it pairs with the orb. You know, that, that really does put archers, you know, in their place as well. So I, th I think it's going to be interesting. I think we're going to see variety, you know, because as well, don't forget, people are going to be having, um, tanks and especially you know the uh the mvp crackers that you get you know they can have like two tanks sometimes three tanks hey we've seen we've even seen um um uh balkali you know with the with five tanks effectively going out you know just to really be a nuisance when the uh when the team needs you know that sort of that front line so uh yeah i'm looking forward to the uh the, the mixes and uh, when people consider what else is needed on the field mm-hmm that's why I like this game over like the Rise of Kingdoms, but I ain't gonna get too much into that because that's not really a discussion. <laughs> you know, you know what I was just thinking right now is like, you know, I wonder like what's going on. Like, clearly they want to shift people away from Mage Meta, 
right? They want people to utilize more of the marches, which, okay, I can agree with that. Right, a little bit more versatility out there instead of seeing a bunch of Lilia heads everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I remember so, seeing that in season right, one. That was fun. Right now, now you see substantially more archers out there. Um, so I get it, but it's like, what interests me is the fact that they didn't stick with mages just being the AOE gods. You know, like why was Bert Tohar made for single target damage if mages, you know, at least at face value when you're first looking at the game you're like oh that's going to be the aoe commanders right that's their bread and butter is doing aoe damage on those chokes but now you have new archers coming with an artifact that does aoe damage so it's like at what point like are they just kind of shifting people like you know heroes and artifacts around based off how they want the meta to shift or what the hell <laughs> i mean then you know again, yeah. Oh, go ahead, son. go ahead. Oh, sorry, I was, I was going to say, it would actually be really interesting one time to, you know, to get a dev insight, whether, <clears throat> you know, whether there could ever be an interview or there was even through a QA, and a because, you know, we see Bert Tohar, right, as a direct creation and composition to, as we say, to put archers in their place, so to speak, right, you know, with, despite how high, highly insane their, uh, you know, like Cinder and Fregor, single attack damage is, but, uh, if you get that all blocked on, especially with the recent buff to Toha, you know, with the cycling, how you can get that forty-five uh, percent bonus on the orb quicker. If you've got like m myself and Guns a five out of five orb T five, awakened but Toha, that orb even on a T five, you know, you you're looking at you know quite easily forty to fifty thousand damage. And that's obviously, of course, you know, pretty much yellow bar in that march. Now Zeta Magra really does seem to be a. I mean, it's, it's very, you know, against all marches, but it seems as though it's in a way saying, okay, Bert Hall, we see you, but we're going to do it better. Uh, you know, we're going to be more sustainable within ourselves. Bert Tohar attacks, uh, attacks archers, obviously has the defense buffs and the counter attack reduction buffs so that he can attack archers a bit more freely and can keep going. It's bulky, basically. That's bulk. Whereas Zeta Magra appears to be, uh, you know, it's almost like a life stealer. You know, you do damage, you get health back. So it's sustaining itself, but uh, but through damage rather than being uh, uh, outright bulky. So I'm very interested with the um, you know with with how they do it. You know, do they do they do something else with calves? I've I've joked about AOE calves. Do they do they do they do that for them so that when they actually get on top of? Um, but I mean, you've got things like Bakshi, right, where they've got almost like a follow through uh, impact. So you know, maybe they have that. Maybe that's their sort of version of the AOE for calves. Do we have more heroes in the cav uh, department? So. I think with too many AOE mages it, or AOE heroes, it makes the game depressing, right? Yeah, it makes it a bit depressing, it makes it a bit oppressive. When you get stuck in a choke point or have to go through a choke point, if you're just going to get, you know, if you t if there's 100 marchers, you only have to target 50 of them because the other 50 are going to get splashed. So I think the devs just don't want to go too crazy and have everyone have AOE all the time because effectively it's just going to be your screen yeah. glitching all over and splash. That's true. <laughs> yeah, so many numbers on the screen, you wouldn't be able you gotta to tell. Mix it up, right? You got to mix it up, right? You got to have other things. I think that's where the artifacts can become more creative. Like the the orb, in a way, is an area of effect, uh, but at least it's a radius based one. Yeah. Because uh, it acknowledges two potentially up to two marches either side of the target, and throws them airborne. It's different, you know. If if because if you get thrown airborne in the middle of a war, uh, you you're likely going to die, unless you know if people see their marches sort of move because they move to the side. You're just going to get focused because you end up going slightly more forward because everyone else is dragging back. Mm -hmm. Especially when, like, when they're pulling back and you yeah. get pushed forward sometimes. <laughs> that you're, you're screwed. You're stuck there for like two seconds. Exactly. Exactly. That animation looks so funny, bro. But it doesn't stun you as as hard as you know you would think. But as we know, like Saint said, that one second that you're ahead of ahead of everyone in that skirmish line, you're done. <laughs> you you can't get that on you? Yeah. Dude, I know we've all been there, bro. I know we've all been there. You're sitting there kiting, and then your game lags, or something comes up, or or you get a phone call, or whatever, and then split second done into the yeah. abyss. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I say when the tanks are gone, you become the tank, and uh, <laughs> it's, it's not fun. Not fun when they're up to like fifty, sixty people hungry for you know the first person they see yeah 
Yeah, guys. So one. So what we're trying to get to this also is for those of you guys that are just starting off the game, season one, or even barely going into your season two, you know. Uh, this is definitely something to take account account for, right? Especially with this these five marches that I named earlier. Not everyone can awaken so many different heroes, right? But pay attention to which marches are the ones dominating more now with that being said one of the things that i always say about bert and tohar is that for me they're already getting more more merits than lily of Valen. is there times lily of Valen gets more merits yes that's probably because we're dealing with um you know choke points and whatnot but for the most part my bert tohar are now doing better with the max orb right um damn i just had a crazy brain fart oh yeah anyways so one of the things to take into account, right, is which one of those marches is doing the best. Like, what are, like, your top two, top three, you know what I mean? Because not everyone can run five marches. I'm well aware of that. So, going forward, especially with Zeta and Magra coming, you know, stay tuned to my channel. Hey, help your boy out. You know, we're going to be doing a lot of testing <laughs> ourselves. <laughs> and be able to like really point out because even though I'm mage, I'm mage gang, right? Mage main. I think if I had to choose, let me ask the guys first. Let's see, let's see what they think. If if you guys had to choose one march to bring out to or to have in the game, which one would it be right now? I mean, obviously for me, it would be Bert Tohar. Okay, like, they're just that good. Also, Saint, your mic's echoing. I'm echoing? Yeah. I don't I heard it a little bit. But not anymore. Okay, so... I would go with Lilia, Fea, Celestials. I know I've not had them yet, but that for me, one march, you know, do or die, one march, it's got to be that. Dude, right, uh, dude, I think I'm gonna have to go with Bert Tohar. I I almost wanted to say Sindri on Fragar, right? Because of their, because of their Sindri, because of their um, their ability to be super good in raids, right? And you know, I do I do like frames. I don't base my whole goal for the game around frames, but you know, I do like that. And you know, so they're good for raids and they're good in the open field. However. The satisfaction of hitting marches for 80 to 90k with the orb <laughs> is super satisfying. <laughs> Especially when I hit a T4 archer for 120k. Brother. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> or a like, T4 cap for 150,000. Right. Rest in peace, Tiger Woods. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> You'll have a T5 player coming up, or T5 archer player coming up thinking they're big and bad, right? And then boom they get hit by a, by a freaking uh a mirage orb they're just they start really reevaluating their life to, their life choices at that point so yeah i would say for right now like the main one would be bert tohar and bert tohar do fall under the g2 category um i will say for me sure like on my third march i do use like waldir and valen right but when it came down to it, I wasn't even using Valen anymore. I was using Lilia, Thea with Celestials, Bert, and then Bert Tohar. You know, so like, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, you know, just a little side note, I guess. Going into the next season, guys, I'm looking at potentially trying out Nico Hosk. And then Zeta and Guanwin is probably going to be my, my little, like, test march that I'm going to be having. And I'll definitely interchange Kanara and Zeta together with the with the uh, spear. Now I didn't add Magret because I don't have enough tokens, right? And we won't get dailies for Magret until the end of the season, so I probably I won't be seeing the full use of her. But I'll be in touch with a lot of the main archers. Uh, and I guess this is me asking if you are a main archer and you're watching this and you're gonna max them out, please share your reports, guys. Um, so for Saint and Gray, like, it, okay, this one's more for Gray. So Gray, you're what, 42 million power? Uh, 40.8. 40.8, and he's fully invested into mages. Do these new archers or any of this stuff affect you yet? 
Well, obviously the new archers aren't affecting me currently, but I will have to worry about hitting one of those things, or letting one of those hit me. Mm. But I will say that the normal attack doesn't really affect counterattack too much. So we will. I guess we'll see. We'll see. Oh, I, I see what you're saying. Like, yeah, they might be strong if, or whatever, they, but it's not gonna hit hurt you. to hit them. Yeah, if they hit you, it's wraps. But if you hit them, it's not that much of an issue. The reason Sindri on Fregar is scary to hit is just because they they do double attacks. That's what's the scary thing. But the counterattack isn't really, you know, crazy. Dude, I guess the... we'll see how it plays out, though. Yeah. So essentially, guys, like, those are the main things that we're touching with this video. Is where do we see, like, the future of mages? You know, like, is it the end of mages? I don't think it's the end of mages, guys, but it definitely has us on the edge of our seat. What I will say is, you know, pay attention to the new seasons, which I want to say we're the first ones going into the new season. Not the first first ones, but the first group, right? Going into mm -hmm. the new mergers. Um, obviously, you guys know that all-star match with Neuer and who else is in that one? NK. Okay. We'll try to cover. We'll, we'll try to cover some of that stuff. Um, but, you know, going into it, it's just to give you guys kind of insight of how further to think, right? For example, um, just as an example, when I started playing Rise of Kingdoms a year late. So what I would do is I would see, like, okay, what well, marches are still relevant? Like, okay, sure, people are investing heavy into, like, a Richard or whatever, but now people aren't using them down the road, which could potentially be the same thing for some of our... Um, some of our heroes already um nico's kind of making a comeback right but he was he was kind of that march for a while and i kind of do like that you know there's different stuff coming in that um can change metas right season talents oh nico's back you know what i mean like because without it like no we're getting Haas back you know like i don't know mm -hmm. saying any last takeaways <clears throat> I think I'm very curious about the power creep. You mentioned it, and uh, I think with these, you know, with, the, with these archers and how they're looking at different things each time, they're almost like looking at countering the previous uh, march potentially. So again, I think I think Cavs, you know, Cavs might have the best, you know, might have the best insight how it's going to go. But yeah, I'm very interested for the future of you know mages being a, more of a mage, yeah, a mage player. Uh, I still, I still think there's a, there's a lot of life. I think they're gonna get even more creative. So I, I'm looking forward to it. Great. The power creep is definitely real. Let's just say that. <laughs> but you really have you have to look at the archers and like since we have technically three generations of archers already out. You know you have um, the Kanara, Hosk, and Nico, um, Sindrion, Fragar. And then now these new archers coming out, you can really see how fast they scale up. So the power creep is definitely real. Yeah, guys. So we're towards the end of the video, you know. So, like I said, one of the biggest takeaways is just, you know, when it comes to your guys' investments, like really understand, like how, like how fast are you awakening a hero? What marches are still the ones that are like the main heavy hitters out there? Because a lot of people have some marches out there that are kind of like meh, right? They just use them because they have the troops. But, you know, really pay attention into this new mergers coming in. Um, what is it? Season B2 now? What is it called now? That we're heading into, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. sixth season though if you play from launch day. Yeah, so we'll be six six seasons in and you guys will be able to see. Like I already told you guys what well, my my uh my five march is gonna be so it's gonna be Lilia Thea with Celestials, Bert Tohar. I'll probably throw my Vestals on that, even though Celestials are still better, but you know, I like to have that twenty percent is it twenty percent? The twenty percent buff from the Vestals. I'll have my Kanara Hosk. Um and then I'll probably have uh Waldir and Valen uh with Vestals. So yeah, my Bert Tohar will still have the Celestials. My Waldir Valen will have the Vestals. 
and then I'll have um, probably uh, damn I just had a brain fart Archer Marches oh yeah yeah and the, my neat my uh, Kanara Hosk and then I'll be running uh, Zeta and Guanwin as like my little uh, like test march I will say something. This might be an extremely hot take, but I feel like with these new archers and the new artifact, I think we could see less celestials loaded more vestals. Think so. Mainly because the mainly because of the artifact of uh, that fifteen percent um, HP pen. Mm. The are way squishier than those. That that could be me though. It could be a we need to see that open field testing. And just artifact testing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think there's an interesting future, right? You know, there's a new faction. We don't know how the faction may play into it. There's there's a lot of stuff. Oh, you know, potentially just sprinkling in other you know epic heroes that may drop uh, legendary heroes that may drop outside of uh, you know the the two per season. It's uh, I think uh, I think whichever place that you go for. You know, you're gonna have a good time. You just need to look more though, as you say, meta, meta wise. You know, get get maybe your first march nailed down, and then look at what you know. Invest what what's gonna be there long term. You know, what's mm -hmm. what's gonna last for like years, years and years. Yeah, well, there you guys have it, guys. So you know, like I said earlier, like the biggest message to take in is you know, pay attention to what the meta is. Just how Saint said. You know, do your homework, see which ones are doing the best. See which, and besides doing the best, like, which ones are you having the most fun with, too? You know, because that, that obviously matters a lot, too. But at the same time, getting good merits. Um, deciding uh, whether you want to be a hybrid or not, right? And I know I'm towards the end, and but this is very crucial, guys. And I let me say this again for the people in the back because I keep on seeing this. Guys. Stop investing. This is gonna be some people are gonna choke me for this. Stop and <laughs> stop stop mass training some infantry and cavalry because you want to have a full march at T5. I promise you, it is not worth it. When when you because even if you have one full march, then what's the point, right? You get one full march out there, it gets melted, it's done. Now your awakened uh cavalry and infantry that you have are just gonna be sitting there, right? Instead. You could have had an additional two to three hundred k archers and two to three hundred k vestals for marches that you constantly have out in the field. So, you know, we'll leave that food for thought as well, guys. I hope you guys found uh, the video to be useful to help kind of show you guys, you know, how me, uh, uh, how Saint Gray and I freaking, you know, break it down, looking at metas, kind of making sure that we invest properly and all that. So, I mean, let me know in the comment section below, guys. Like, what do you guys think? Like, who do you guys would think? Who do you guys think would be the top two? Who do you guys think would be the top three? Are people going to have to move more hybrid than fully mage to kind of, you know, reach like a better end goal? Like, let me know in the comment section what do you guys think. Once like, and if you like the video, make sure you drop a like. Make sure you guys share it with your buddies to kind of like show them. Like, hey, look, this is these this is how the mindset of these guys are thinking that have been playing this game for a while. Um, and this is what we need to think about, you know. We need to stop investing into stuff that doesn't have longevity to it. So, that's going to be it for this video, guys. It's your boy Guns here, Saint, and Mr. Gray himself, a.k.a. YT Cod Drunky. Hey, yo. <laughs> Later, guys. <laughs>